Track 13, there ain't half been some clever bastards. B side of. Oh, hit me on. with your rims. Hit it? me. I yeah. think. Was it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. All reasons. No, it was hit me. Hit me. Yeah. Um, weird, because it's a lot of people that the people that aren't on the reasons to be cheerful list are <laughs> who are on their own. I've been. To, <laughs> you're either playing tribute or you're observing, or observing foibles. It's foibles. Me. Small foibles. foibles. That one. I thought I could just write across their reputation and discuss another area of re related to them. <laughs> Whatever that means, but it's like Einstein. You know, I know nothing about ECM plus two or something. Yeah, I don't know nothing about Einstein. Do they know what he invented? I know he's a clever bastard. <laughs> so, yeah, you because know, everyone says so, right? Yeah, I've got to prove it to you. I could no, no way. I could, I'm, Stephen Hawking's got to be clever, isn't he? I mean, listen to him. Well, you know what I mean. He's got a rewrite for Hawking in. He, he should get on there. Yeah. But Noel Coward, you see. Noel Coward. I don't really... People think I have a big affinity with Noel Coward. I was very disappointed with what those boys did with Noel Coward a couple of years ago with those songs. Neil Tennant's... Oh, right. ...arrangements. Didn't think much of that. I was very disappointed with that. I thought that could have been so good. Matalo, Matalo, where you follow... I will. They could have really done something sp special, but I thought it was pretty, pretty weak, really. All yeah. And Noel Coward is a uh, very, very um, sensitive and very um, uh, fragile. Yeah. He's not. He's not this sort of strong. I mean, you know, we know he's like a camp as a sausage and um, very too sort of upper uh, aspirant, upper class, and you know, snob and all the rest of it. But. There is something essentially extremely funny about him and yeah. extremely, well, like laconic is a good word to use, but there's something really powerful about now. No, no, it's, I, you see, I think it's like yourself, you're in a similar line, good observer. You see people. Yeah. Good at, at, at creating a thing about <clears throat> people. And he was very much of his time, you know, yeah. and all the Definitely. stuff that he wrote about. Definitely. Yeah. No, I just yeah, uh, you know, it's good to it's good to sort of pay tribute to people. I enjoy yeah. doing that. Yeah. Segovia, yeah. Segovia, you see, yeah, there we go. We don't hear enough don't about to, Segovia. Don't have to say nothing about him. Practicing eight hours a day when he was eighty seven. Had a kid when he was eighty three. Yeah? Yeah, amazing kid. What's he about Spaniards? Picasso, same deal, wasn't it? Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> I think do a lot of crouching. Make note. Or tap some red wine. Yeah. A lot of crouching. No, bouncing and crouching. And Picasso used to bounce around like that, crouching. Did he? Which is a very good exercise, yeah. What, and he's painted? Well, he's just... painted, bouncing about all over the place, yeah. Do you like Picasso's work? I love Picasso's work. I, I find, you know, as an art student, I, you always question people who everyone loves. And then you come around to realising why. Partly because he's so prolific and such... Couldn't touch a thing without making a beautiful mark. And that itself is, you know, magnificent. But also so creative and so inventive and so 150% energetic on it all the time and getting such a buzz off it. To me, they're all things that really matter more than anything. He didn't do it so that we will talk about him now. He did it because he loved it. And yeah. to me, that's where you do it.